epic Minecraft gamers. I'm your host Waddles, this is your show, The Minecraft Guide. <laughs> <laughs> Today's the big day, the Sweet 16, the Spider-Man birthday party. Oh, yes, yes, yes. A uh, little, little seeker, though. Batman's cooler than Spider-Man, sorry. <laughs> so, uh, today we are going to work on the slime farm, and this is going to be a big, big project, a, the huge day. Last episode, we got a haste beacon. The episode before that, we found out about slime chunks. We, we got a horse, too, but the horse is definitely unrelated to this project. So, uh, first I'm going to start with some materials, and then we're going to talk about how we'll do this, the steps, everything like that. Materials. Obviously, in non-exact amounts, you will need building blocks, iron blocks, and carved pumpkins for iron golems, some fences. Then you're going to need a way to kill those golems, so either magma blocks or cactus. Uh, those are the two ways that I would recommend using. And you'll need some hoppers as well, or maybe some mine carts with rails and, and stuff if you're using magma blocks. Then finally, maybe some kind of bubble stream to move items all the way up to the surface, which would mean some kind of uh, dispenser or dropper circuit thing too, and some of that stuff is not in the chest. <laughs> so yeah, those are basically the materials that you are going to need. You don't need a haze beacon, but a haze beacon is going to help because, oh boy, if you've never done one of these projects, there is a lot, like a lot, a lot, a lot, did I say a lot of digging, and my food is low already, so I'm going to go ahead and fill up some food food as well while we talk about uh, some major steps in this project. So, slime farms are uh, a big project, and I need to harvest that. I'll do that later. Uh, but slime farms are a really big project. They require quite a bit of work. There are a few main major steps that you should be taking when doing one of these builds. Step one is, of course, locating a slime chunk, and this is where I have to refer you back to episode 37. I'll put a card on screen right here. Uh, because that whole episode is all about finding slime chunks. I'm not going to re-go over that in today's episode. That wouldn't really make much sense to me. But basically, find yourself a slime chunk. Step one, done. After that, you're going to need to do a lot of caving. And when I say caving, it's more so just lighting up the caves. You don't need to extract the, the resources if you don't want to. You probably should. It would be silly not to, but you don't have to. The only thing you have to do, like you must do this, is lighting up those caves. How far? Well, technically, if you want to be overkill, like 200 or 250 blocks out from your slime chunk, but if you just want to make the thing work, try going like 100 blocks out in every direction. So basically a big circle and light up all of those caves. You'll need to eliminate the spawns from those caves for your slime chunk to spawn a lot of slimes. Now I can hear you, mysterious stranger, asking me why. Why would I need to light up the caves that's unrelated and ha, that's the... <laughs> <laughs> That's where I got you, buddy. Uh, it is not unrelated. Because you see, in Minecraft, there's this fancy little thing called a mob cap. Only so many hostile mobs can spawn in your world at a time, and if all of those hostile mobs are spawned in random caves, well, then slime will never have the chance to spawn, and that's obviously going to be a, a bit of a road bump. Speed bump. Aha, uh -huh, sorry, I got distracted. There was somebody outside of my window with a dog. Mm-hmm. Uh, anyways, we're going down to the mines now. We have everything that we need right now, which is really just our pickaxe and and me and the, the ladders. We will need some ladders as well. Right at the end of the last episode, we talked about where we are going to build our slime farm. Our slime farm will be built uh, over here in the chunk with the beacon and then in the chunk right behind it. That's right. We have a double slime chunk, so we can... Uh, do one farm, two farm, but combine them into one big giant farm, and, you know, I love that idea. I think that should up the rates quite a bit. We'll see. I've never done a double slime chunk farm, so maybe it won't, but I think it will. So, after finding your slime chunk and lighting up all of the caves, both steps that I have already done, you are going to need to go in your slime chunk and go all the way up to Y39. That is where our project is sort of officially begin. So if you located your slime chunk way at the bottom of your world, like I did, get some ladders and probably a torch if you're recording, uh, a torch like that, and make your way all the way up. Y39 is the one you want. Slime will not only only spawn in certain chunks of your world, but they will also only spawn below Y40 inside of those chunks. 
That's why you needed to go all the way over to Y39. That is indeed, of course, below Y40. Once you get to that Y39 level, like me, uh, you need to start clearing out your chunk. Remember that F3 and G will display your chunk borders. You will probably want that on so you don't dig more than you have to. Now, a little spoiler, we will actually be digging past uh, our chunk borders in a different step, but for now, just work on your single individual chunk. How tall do you want this space cleared out? Well, three high. So you have a room that is based on Y39 and goes up three blocks. Now, the haste beacon is something that I think am going to love today. If you have the option to, to use a haste beacon, definitely use that beacon. It's your friend. Get an efficiency five pickaxe, that's diamond, and just go to town. It, it'll make your project so, so, so much easier. Now, while digging this junk, don't forget to light it up. You definitely don't want um, like spawns to happen. That would be a problem. Another thing that you should probably do is uh, fill in any areas that aren't filled in. So you see over here, we don't have a floor. Well, we're going to need a floor. So we'll go ahead and just place blocks back. Any blocks are fine as long as they can spawn mobs on them. So that means stone, cobblestone, dirt, granite, um, andesite, um, but really anything that can spawn mobs on it. Blocks that would probably be off limits include leaves and slime blocks themselves. I don't think mobs can spawn on slime blocks, so just stick to blocks that can actually spawn mobs on them. We will definitely be coming back and making our build look prettier uh, down the road, but for today we're just trying to get the farm in. Now, I am going to finish off the whole digging process here. Remember, I'm doing two chunks instead of one, and then we can talk about what you would need to do next. Ah, I have hit a second ravine. Not bad. And I see a dark cave. Whoops, I missed a cave. Uh -huh. Okay, so here we have chunk layer level one, floor one, all nice and done. Now, I'm going to be crazy and continue to hoard all of the cobblestone that I get today. So I think that means I'll make some sort of, I guess materials chest just outside of the chunk you don't have to do this if you don't want your cobblestone or anything like that but uh you know i am emotionally attached to the cobblestone i don't know when i will need it you know doing large-scale projects and such so uh we're we're just gonna keep it all so what do you do after digging out your first layer uh, again on y39 well Go back over to your ladder that you maybe set up and go down three uh, layers because we're repeating the same thing again. You'll want another floor. So if your measurements are matching mine, your floor should be on Y35 this time. After doing that, you will go three blocks down again and make a floor on Y31. After that, like after you've dug that whole floor out, go down three more and make another layer on Y27. Then, after Y27, three down again, and make a floor on Y23. After Y23, three down yet again, and make a floor on Y19. After that, go three more down, and make a final floor on what would be right here, I think. Yeah, uh-huh, right there, on Y15. Now, after Y15, you could go down and make another floor, but I am not going to do that. We have a double slime chunk. We should be more than fine. So, uh, basically what you're doing here is repeating that whole clearing out step a few times. If you happen to come across cave systems while doing this process, go ahead and just block them off. Of course, make sure they're nice and bright, but you don't really need any access to them, unless I guess you want access to them. But this is the step where you'll need a good pickaxe, probably. This is going to take some time, so I recommend doing something that will distract or entertain you while you work on this, this project. Some good ideas? Well, if you're not recording and not 
trying to make it into like an uncut video, which I think I'm going to do for my second channel, by the way. And then turn on some music or watch a YouTube video or, or just do something that is entertaining and not just silent digging. <laughs> uh, by the way, I keep forgetting to mention this. I, I made this thing, uh, oh man, like a week ago now at this point, uh, at least. But there's a special on my second channel that relates to the guide series. So slide over to Waddles 2 and check it out. That's the second channel if you're interested. And if not, well, hey, that's okay too. I, I don't really mind. <laughs> <laughs> so, go ahead and do all of your digging. Now, remember, only dig to the chunk borders for now, and good luck. It's, it's, it's gonna take some time. <laughs> I suppose if you wanted to, on this step, you could go ahead and replace your floors as well, make them prettier, but... I am, again, not worried about that today. But if you are, that's cool. Go ahead and do that now. And an hour and a half and one death later. That's right, as I fell. <laughs> the slime chunks have been completely cleared out, which means it's time for the next step. Now, I've got great news for you. If you enjoy digging, well, then this next step is the step for you. Uh, oh, get away from me. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got bad news. If you hate digging, then this next step is probably not for you because, yeah, we have to dig even more. So, with the spawning platforms all cleared out now, we need to come up with a way to move our slime that are going to spawn on these platforms over to where we can kill them or collect their loot, something like that. So how are we going to get the slime off of this platform? Well, that's actually pretty easy. We're going to make a large falling gap on one side of this farm. It'll probably be that side for me, uh, and we'll put iron golems on the other side. Slime hate iron golems for some reason, and we'll try and jump over to them to kill them, but they won't make it, and they'll fall down the gap, and then we'll place probably magma blocks at the bottom to kill them. So what do you need to do next? Well, pick a side of your, your farm. If you're doing a double chunk, you want one of the long sides. If you're doing a single chunk, just any side will do. Once you've chosen your side, go out four blocks. Those four blocks are going to be your trench. This trench should be even with the top of your farm, so we're on Y39 right now, and this falling area should go all the way down to the bottom of your farm. Now on this step, I am also going to start filling in these walls finally. By the way, we have two full chests of, of cobblestone, and then all of this stuff too. A lot of excess materials, but yep, I have to actually make the walls now which is something that you should definitely do as well if you haven't done so yet. Make sure your whole farm is not only closed off to the outside world, so put a ceiling on it, but also put some walls around it so slime can only fall off the falling side, if that makes sense. But for me, I think it's time to get back to work. Oh, and if you have your caves all nice and lit up correctly, then you should start to notice spawns uh, somewhere around the step. If you don't, that's okay. Don't, don't worry yet. That could just mean you have a cave somewhere or that you've been too close to the slime farm the whole time for slime to spawn. Now, I, I have to warn you, as you get near the bottom of this build, like I am, near the bottom of this whole trench, you might start to get slime jumping down in on you and trying to hurt you, and it's it's dangerous, it's rough, especially if uh, a lot happened to fall on you, uh, so just be really, really careful, and if possible, stay by your farm while you're working on this part, because uh, if you walk away, it allows slime to spawn, right? Now, once you finish digging your whole falling trench and probably clearing it of slime because they are bothersome, you're probably going to want to figure out how to move your slime towards the middle, like a central location, so you don't have to use a bunch of magma blocks and then a bunch of rail lines. I mean, you totally could do that, but I would prefer not. So start by placing some water all the way along one edge of this thing. And make sure this is three blocks below your last platform, by the way. 
the water should move towards the middle. Now go over to the other side and do the same thing. And remember, watch out for falling slime. Now, of course, this is going to be a little bit different if you're doing a single slime chunk and not like a double one like I'm doing. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. This is not good. Not good. Not good at all. Let's move. <laughs> uh, no, please give me a give me a minute. <laughs> Oh man, there are so many slime spawning and it's awesome, but it's really, really dangerous too. It's making this process very difficult. <laughs> but anyways, if you're doing a single slime chunk and not a double one, the measurements are going to be different, but the concept should still be the same. Place water on either side of your falling gap over and over again until you have it moving all towards a central location. And by the way, I have these diamonds here. <laughs> <laughs> I was saving the diamonds that I found down here uh, for like a thing that I was going to do later. I was going to come back and like dig them out and you guys would guess how many there are. So uh, yeah, that's why there's a bunch of diamonds down here. If you did the world download and you found them, nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> All right. So our water goes towards this middle spot right here. This is where you are going to need some signs and probably some magma blocks or alternatively you could be doing this with like cactus and stuff that would work too but i think i'd like to go the sign and magma block route so just because i'm picky i want this dead center so let's say we go three blocks in this way and we'll place signs and then we'll also go three blocks in this way and place more signs that will get us right in the middle of these two chunks these signs should go from one wall straight over to the other wall like this to stop the water. After placing your signs, dig down three more blocks and make the floor all magma blocks. This is exactly how our slime will be... Uh, how should we put this? Uh, eliminated. <laughs> the magma blocks are what we are going to use to kill our slime. So go ahead and get those things in, then get out of there. You, you can leave torches down there if you want, uh, or don't. It doesn't really matter. Now, after we finish this whole thing, we'll need to come back down here and place a rail line running underneath the magma blocks. So all the slime balls that end up laying on this thing are actually picked up, but I'm really just not worried about it right now. I have lots of slime coming in, so that's fine. Now, we unfortunately, and, and I'm sad about this, but we need to take the beacon down because I need iron golems now. So, uh, iron blocks are what I need, and I don't have really any spare ones. I have like two, and that's not going to cut it. So, the beacon's got to go now, unfortunately, but thank you, sweet, sweet uh, haste to beacon. You have been a great friend for this project. Uh, but now it's it's your time to retire. Uh, huh. All right, beacon is away. And by the way, alongside your water, make sure you have something that is like a solid block, like a glass wall or a cobblestone wall or something, so slime don't end up jumping out. I think what we're going to do is place an observation room down here, uh, probably in like the next episode or something. But for now, we'll just throw a bunch of cobblestone. That'll be fine. And then I'd actually. I, I think like to leave the center spot open so I can see down into it and make sure everything is running correctly at the end of the episode. But now it's Iron Golem time. I don't really have an exact amount, but we shouldn't need more than seven. You will also want some fences on this step. Again, no exact amount for you, unfortunately, but you'll need a lot. We'll be using fences to keep the Iron Golems uh, out of harm's reach. All right, so I recommend going all the way up to the top and starting up there. The goal here is to get an iron golem in between two floors. So here's our top layer. There's the next layer. We'll go down like a block or two. Doesn't have to be exact. And then make a hole in the wall. Now, because I'm working with a double chunk, I'm going to sort of stagger these golems. I'll put one over here, and then the next time I go down, I'll go over there. And then the next time back over here, something like that. If you are looking to supercharge your farm and make it crazy productive, then I recommend placing more golems than what we're going to do today. In case you haven't noticed, I have a fair amount of iron, but I don't have like a crazy, crazy amount. So I'm going to try and conserve some materials here on this step. 
Please excuse my horrendous looking box. It's scary. I know it's it's yeah, it's freaky. <laughs> uh, but it's it's only temporary. Also, make sure you place some lighting in your iron golem cages because you definitely don't want like a, a spawn to happen in there and then your golem to get killed or, or something and then you're sad and yep that would just be bad oh no don't die don't die don't you got this man you can do it no no oh well this is that's gonna be one golem gone uh nope move okay <laughs> all right uh huh, be careful not to put them in the wall uh yep uh huh <laughs> Now, after you get your iron golem in, I recommend placing fences around the thing, something like that, and then moving on down to the next one. When slime notice that this golem is standing here, they are going to try and target it. They'll bounce over to it and then end up jumping into this gap and falling all the way down like that, and then moving over to the center and getting killed. And with that, that pretty much is an automatic slime farm. That is how you do it, actually. It's it's honestly pretty easy to do. Oh, oh, and by the way, you can go ahead and leave your torches inside of this thing for the lighting, or you can do other things like lanterns and such, but I, I think torches will be fine. Slime will spawn no matter the light level. You don't need to make this thing dark, and in fact, you don't want it to be dark because then you'll start getting other spawns, and that wasn't the point of this whole thing. Now, we kind of have a giant elephant in the room, and that elephant is actually not in this room, it's on the surface. The elephant that I'm referring to is our mob farm. We built this thing almost directly under the mob farm, and um, technically, again, in a rate sense, that would not be ideal. The mob cap is going to be split between this slime farm and our mob farm, which is, again, technically not ideal, but it should be okay. I, I think it'll be fine. So, let's go ahead and run up to the surface, grab a hopper minecart, and finish this whole build off, because we are pretty much at the final step here. Oh, and by the way, the rails have become special enough to have their own dedicated chest. How how sweet of me, right? To to give them their own special home. I know, I'm a, I'm a nice, kind person. Very, very kind and and nice. Uh, yeah. <laughs> we need a hopper. Uh, oh, I have lots of iron on me. Okay, we'll be able to make a hopper. You know, I didn't even realize, too, we got the hired help um, advancement thing for spawning a golem. And that was, I guess, our first iron golem of this whole world. It's kind of crazy to me. Uh, hopper. So, the plan for now is to set up a basic hopper collection system down here. That means that if we want to get our slime balls, we'll need to come all the way down here under the farm, and oh boy, this thing is working well. But yeah, we'll have to come all the way down here for our slime balls, which is something that I don't want to have to deal with in the long run. Uh, so, we are definitely going to come back and change how this stuff works, but for today, it it'll be fine. So, what are we looking for in this rail line? Well... Pretty much the same thing that we've done on a bunch of other builds inside of this world. We want a rail cart that will loop continuously underneath the magma blocks. Don't forget to clear out the blocks around the edge here so your minecart doesn't hit them when it turns. That would be a big problem. And don't forget to use a fair amount of powered rails because turns slow minecarts down. And we definitely do not want a minecart that is not moving underneath this thing because then we'll be wasting slime balls. Kind of like we are doing right now. <laughs> We're wasting a lot uh, because I haven't been picking them up. And just to be clear as well, make sure you also light up this area down here. If you don't, you could get like a baby zombie to spawn and it could ruin your whole minecart system, which is also not ideal. We need this thing to move and, and stay moving forever. And oh boy, we have no room to spare. That is bedrock right below. Near one side, place a hopper going into a chest, and then have rails going right over it. Make sure you don't power your hopper so it doesn't lock, and then you should be good to go. Now, we need our hopper minecart to go on this track, so let's just put it, I guess, here. We'll break in so we can push it, and now it should work. It should pick up everything and always move forever, and then every time it passes by here, it'll drop something off. Now, right now, it's going to be overloaded, and 
that's honestly fine. It needs to catch up. Oh, no, the items despawn. Never mind. <laughs> and that, my friends, is a slime farm. A fully automatic, hopefully super productive slime farm. Now, we are going to be coming back and modifying this thing, like I mentioned, in the next episode and again in other future episodes to up the production rates of this thing. It seems that the production is actually pretty decent currently, but I'd definitely like to have something that is considered, I guess, absurdly decent. Or absurdly good. Absurdly decent wouldn't be very good. <laughs> absurdly good. We're, we're going for great. Small thing to note, you may want a double chest on this thing at least because if the rates are good, it's going to fill up pretty fast. We actually already have over a half stack of slime balls, so not bad. Today's comment of the day is from Excalibur Zone. Now, this is something that I'm doing a little different. The comment was a long one, and there is a single point that I'd like to address, so I did the dot, dot, dot. It probably won't become a norm, but Excalibur had the idea to place arrows and item frames above bubble columns to show the direction, and how did I not think about that? That's genius. So I think that's something that I'm going to have to run around in the world and do. We have two bubble column elevators over there currently, and then... Uh, one over here to go down to the mines. I need to make a more permanent entrance, though. This is definitely not meant to stay here, but I, I love that idea. That is such a good idea. Thank you, Excalibur, and I, I'm going to do that. I am going to try and do that between episodes, actually. So, that's how you build a slime farm. If you're looking for a step-by-step -step tutorial, well, you're in luck. I actually have a few of those on my channel. In those videos, there is a whole lot less rambling. I have materials laid out, and everything is done step-by-step -step with timestamps. So, if you're into that, slide over to my tutorial playlist and look for the slime farm tutorials. I think I have two or three, and they all should be working in Minecraft 1.14. I'd like to send a special shout out to Robbie M today. Thank you very much for the support and thank you all for watching. Remember, the uncut version of the slime chunk digging will be on Waddle Stew if you're into that. So head over there, press that subscribe button, drop a like on this video, links in the description. Go have a good one. I'll see you next time. Goodbye, everybody.